All right, let's try this again. All right, translation of graph, uh, but part A was just graphing stuff. In the third example that we did, we'll call it example three, uh, was we are going to graph an absolute value. So we could say y equals, but now the days we're saying f of x. We're actually going to go back to y just a little bit today. So, but on this one, we just write f of x equals the absolute value of x. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I think we did this whatever day. What's the last day we had class? Thursday? You wrote that. Right. And um, put f and put f of x. All right. So we pick some numbers. I, I like to sometimes pick negative numbers, zero, and some positive numbers. So let's throw some negatives in there. Makes it pretty easy. And then a zero, and then some positives. We can pick any numbers you want, but it just keeps us all compact onto the graph. All right, absolute value is very, very easy. What does absolute value do? Does it just change the sign of it? Okay, it always makes it positive. Now, if it was negative to begin with, yeah, sure, it changes the sign of it. All right, but what it does for every single number, it just makes it positive. Except for what? Except for one number, zero, because zero is not positive and it's not negative. All right, so this is easy. So that's a three, that's a two, that's a one, that's zero, that's one, two, and three. All right, and if we were to graph this thing, I'll just, uh, let's just, we got this here, might as well use it. Correct. Absolute value is the distance that is away from zero. It's kind of like the definition of absolute value. That's it. All right, so let's do some different colors so we can see it a little bit. All right, let's plot some points. Negative 3, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Negative 2, 2. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. Now if I go to positive 1, I go up to positive 1. 2, 2. 3, 3. I could keep going if I wanted to, but that's enough to get an idea of what it's, what's happening here. This is not a curved line. Oh, by the way, I forgot a word on Thursday. Let me finish graphing this and I'll show you what it was. Remember we had the, that x squared one and it was curved? I meant to tell you the, the name of that shape. Remember that curve shape like this? We had an arrow here, arrow here, it looks like a smiley face. All right, we call that a parabola. Have you heard that word before? Yeah, heard Now you have. All right, it's a parabola. That's what you call that thing, all right? This is just, I don't know, it's nothing. It's just an absolute value, just straight lines, all right? But they all emanate, they come from that origin right there, zero, zero. And they go this way, they go this way. So there's no, uh, there's nothing on the um, below, right? There's, there's nothing below. So if you wanted to take a look, this is not what they ask, but let's just do it anyway because we finished talking about domain and range. What would the domain of this be? So that means what? All the possible x values. What are all the possible x values for y equals or f of x equals the absolute value of x? What are all the possible x values? Is That's right, because this keeps on going. Okay, we, we put negative three here, right, on our chart, but I could have put negative four, negative five. I could have gone to negative infinity, correct? So any value of x works for this. I could put any number, any real number, I could put any number in for there and I could always take the absolute value of it. Does that make sense? All right. So uh, what's, the, uh, what's the domain of this thing? It's all the numbers. So it goes from what? We'll call it domain equals what? Negative infinity all the way to what? Positive infinity. Okay. So that was kind of easy on that one. What about the range? The range means all the possible y values. So is there anywhere here where I'm not going to get any y values? And where would that be? Well, now zero. If I put zero in for x, I get a y for x. Right, OK. So negative 1 will not show up on the y axis, correct? All right, negative 2, negative 3, right? All the way up to where? What about negative a half? What about negative a quarter? What about negative 0. 0. 0.00001? Okay, that they still don't. All the way up until you get to what? To zero. So the range, 
So it's not any of this stuff down here. The range starts where? Where does it start? At zero. That's right. And do I include zero? Yeah. So what kind of a thing do I put? What kind of a, a bracket? Okay. Put a bracket. So the range goes from zero all the way where? To infinity. That's right. Because any number you put in for x will have a y value. Okay. Greater than zero or equal to zero. All right. So that would be zero to infinity. So that would be the domain and range. It's not what they're asking for this problem. It just popped in my head. I thought, ah, since we've done domain and range, might as well find the domain and range of this thing. All right. All we're trying to do is just graph it. And that's how you graph it. Pretty simple. Absolute value is not that tough. Um, it just has a negative and it's got a positive and it just goes in the same exact direction, same exact slope either way. But that's what the graph is right there. No big deal. Everybody good with that? You'll see some of that in the homework, all right? So, um, but we're gonna do stuff a little bit different than this. So what have we graphed so far? What do we graph in part? Okay, yes. Okay. So uh, what have we graphed so far? What was the first graph that we did? We did y equals, I think it was x squared, didn't we? or f of x, right? I think we might've said f of x, but I'm just gonna put y for right now. All right, so we did that. What else did we do? We did cubed, and then we did absolute value. All right. So let's just sketch the x squared. So like if I have a little thing right here, what did my, it look like this. Do you remember that? And what do we call that shape? It's a parabola. We just talked about it just a few minutes ago. Now this doesn't really have a name for this shape, but if I was, I'll tell you what, let's go over here and make it a little bit bigger. All right. You remember what the x cubed looked like just generally? It kind of went like this. That's kind of like the x squared, isn't it? But it went up a little steeper. But then what happened to the negatives, though? They didn't go up. They went what? They went down. So that's what the x cubed looks like. So you should be able to look at a graph and see generally, is it an x squared? Is it an x cubed? Or is it a whatever? All right. There are, so there's a certain like look to some of these graphs. Now there are some graphs that look super crazy and there's just hardly any way to figure out what the equation would be associated with them. But these are like, like really, really common ones. Okay. Super common. All right. So, uh, and then we just did this so we can just do this real quick. Whoops. That looks terrible. Anyway, the absolute value looks like what? It's just straight this way and it's yeah, straight that way. All right. So that's what absolute value looks like. All right. Everybody got that in your head? With that said, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that little parabola, that little uh, curve thing right there, and we're going to move it. We're going to move it left, move it right, move it up, move it down. So what does that do to this equation if I move it left, move it right, move it up, move it down? That's what the translation is. So when we say we translate something, we're taking it from one place. We're taking that same exact shape, and you're just shifting it. That's all you're doing. You're moving it to the right moving it to the left, moving it up, moving it down. That's what a translation is, okay? That's why the name of it is called translation of graphs. We're taking the basic shape that you're used to and we're just moving it left and right, up and down. Does that make sense? All right, so let's do that. Um, I'm going to do... I'm not going to... What I'm going to do next, I'm not going to do it with every single one. I will go to that Desmos program. You kind of saw it as I was restarting that, that program. Um, but let's do this. Uh, we might as well use that graph again just to make it a little easier for us so it doesn't look super sloppy. And I'm not going to do, what I'm going to do right now, I'm not going to do for every single one. Okay, It's just to kind of get an idea of what's happening here. So if I just said y equals x squared, let's do this. All right, put the x here. I'll put a y instead of f of x. I could have put f of x equals, but it's kind of interchangeable. Uh, let's just make this easy. Let's make this negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So if I stuck, the neg if I stuck a negative 2 in for the x there, what's my y going to be here? It's going to be negative 4 or positive 4 because I'm squaring it. What's that going to be? It's going to be positive 4, right? Because negative 2 times negative 2 or negative 2 squared is positive 4. Put a negative 1 in there, what's that going to be? Positive 1. Put a 0 in there, it's going to be 0. 
positive one is one, put a two in there, and you get a positive four. So what's the graph gonna look like? Well, it's gonna look like a parabola, right? Just like what we said before. But I will put it in here, negative two, four, negative two, one, two, three, four, uh, negative one, one, right there, zero, zero, one, one, two, four, I could keep going, but it, you see, it, it goes up pretty quick, right? If I go to three, then I'm all the way up at nine. I don't think I even have nine places on this graph, but you get the idea, all right? And you just try to draw it. This graphing, graphing tablet thingy that I use, graphics tablet. It's a little slippery, so I can't do it super smooth, but you get the idea. It's a nice smooth curve that looks like that. So that's our basic parabola. That's our basic y equals x squared. But what if I did something to that? What if I, let's do it in a different color. What if I did this? y equals x squared. We'll just make it easy. We'll just go, ah, uh, we'll go 2, all right? What if I did that to it? What's that going to do to my graph? Well, we're not going to have to do this all the time, so I'm only going to do this maybe two times. What does that do to it? So if this is my x and that's my y, let's do this. So if x, we'll stick the negative 2, 0, or sorry, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and let's see what we get now. Now, is it a 4? No, because if I put a negative 2 in for this, I do get a 4, but what's that going to give me then? If I add a 2 to it, what's it going to do? It's going to make it a 6. That's right. So if I put a negative 1 in for this, that's a 1. 1 plus 2 is what? 3. Put a 0 in for x, it's a 2. Put a 1 in, I get a 3. Put a 2 in, I get a 6. So let's see what it did to this normal, everyday, average, y equals x squared parabola looking thing. Okay, Let's see what that plus 2 did to that uh, parabola. Well, let's plot the points. Negative 2, 6. So negative 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. Negative 1, 3. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3. 0, 2, right there. And then 1, 3, and then 2, 6. It's the exact same shape, isn't it? Right? I didn't really do anything to it, like to make it wider, make it skinnier. That's a lesson for another day. We're not going to do that in here for this uh, chapter. But what did it do to that normal, that white parabola right there? What did it do to it? It moved it up too. That's right. Okay. It moved it up or it translated or it shifted it. Okay. However you want to say it. All right. But it did. It moved it two places up. Right. Without putting all the numbers in. What do you think it would do if I said y equals x squared, let's say minus 3? What do you think it would do to our normal everyday parabola? It'd drop it three places. That's right. So instead of starting here or starting here, where is it going to start? At the negative what? At the negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Now, how did I get that shape? Well, I went over 1 and up 1, didn't I? I went over 2 from that starting point, right? So I went over 2 and up what? 1, 2, 3, 4. See what I'm doing? I'm just making the same exact shape, except it translated it. It moved it. It shifted it down three places. So that would be, see these are mirror images, the left side and the right side. So that would move it like this. Okay, same exact width to it, right? It doesn't make it wider. It doesn't make it skinnier. Okay, all it did was take that white graph, that one that we started with, the regular y equals x squared, and what it did, it just shifted it. So that plus, that minus on the end, it makes it go up and it makes it go down. Okay, if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. Everybody with me on that? That's not too hard, is it? Nah. It's, it's not that big of a deal. So you should be able, what if I gave you, you know, what if I gave you like this to graph on your own? Are you going to have to do this thing and do that little chart and put a bunch of numbers in? You could, but do you have to? No, it'd be a lot easier just to say, 
oh, wait a minute. I know what that looks like. That's x squared. That's a what? What's the name? What's the word? It's a parabola, okay? And that means it doesn't start at 0, 0. Where does it start? At 0, negative 3. That's right, okay? But then you should know what the shape of a parabola does. What does it do from where you start? You go over 1, up 1, right? Just like right here. Do you see that right there? Then you go over what? 2 and up 4. If you wanted to go over 3, how far up would you go? 9, right? Because if there was a 3 here, that would be a 9, wouldn't it? All right? So, but instead of starting at the origin, you just start here. You go over 1, up 1. Go over 2, up 4. If I wanted to go over 3, how far would I go up? 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So technically, it would go here. So this thing would keep on going through that point right there. Okay? Yes? Now you start here. Now, if I go over negative 2, I'd have to go up 4, because remember, I'm squaring. Okay? So if I start here and I go over 2 this way, I'm going to have to go up 4, which puts me right there. Okay? And if I go over 3, then I go up to 9, which would put me here. All right? And I could just continue that, making sure that it goes through those points. All right? Let's take a look at Desmos real quick and do that with this. I got to change this so I can see it. There we go. And there we go. All right, so let's put some stuff in here. So, I mean, it's basically what I just did, but I just want to show you on this program, all right? On some of the other ones, this really comes in handy. So y equals um, x squared. So there's your y equals x squared. Let's do that. Let's keep that just to kind of have something to go off of. And let's do this. Let's go y equals x squared. Let's do a plus. Plus what? Let's go a little bit more than what we did before. Let's go plus 6. Look what it did. It made the same exact shape, but what did it do to that red one? It just shifted it up, 6, because of that plus 6. That's what that plus 6 is doing to that parabola. It just moves it up. Okay. What if, um, what if I made this minus? What do you think it would do? That's it. It would just go down, right, and start at negative 6. Do you see that? Simple, isn't it? Now, it does it the same exact, it does the same exact thing uh, for any equation that you do, okay? Just taking the formula or taking your, your function and just adding something to the end of it or subtracting something to the end of it, all that does is make it go up and down. So what's another, what's another one that we have done before? Not squared, but what? Cubed. cubed. So let's do cubed. So there's that red one right there. Okay? And then watch this. Let's put a 3 here. See what it did? Look. That's what the cube looks like. See that red one? That's just regular, ordinary, everyday y equals x cubed. That red one. Okay? Look at the blue one, though. What did I do? Well, I'll show you. Look what, it, look what this is. This is x cubed what? Minus 6. So look where its zero is. It's down here at negative six. And it's the same exact shape, isn't it? Yeah. All right. It's the same exact shape. It goes up this way. It goes down this way, except where it starts. This one starts at zero, zero. This one starts at zero, negative six. Well, it depends on the equation. It depends on the equation. This one, yeah, it's going to be one. Well, yeah, I, see, I got to, um, let's see, I got to hit plus here. I'll show you. There you go. So there's your one, one right there. Do you see that? I just blew it up a little bit so you can see a little more detail. All right. I'll tell you what, let's do it without the half. There you go. See, there's one, one. What would it be if I put it, if I put a two in for this, Where's my next point going to be? It's going to be where? If I put a 2 in for x. 2 cubed. What's 2 cubed? No, 2 cubed. What's 2 cubed? No, 2 cubed. Come on. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That's correct. So look, if I go all the way up, guess where it hits? 
Boom, right there, hits at eight. You see it? All right. Now in this one, instead of going over one, one, well, it still goes over one, one, but you're at a different point though, right? You got it, because you got a different starting point. So go over, <coughs> excuse me, getting choked up, this is so exciting. So I go over one and up one, correct? And if I wanted to, I could go over two and up eight. But where's that going to put me? Because I started at negative six. If I go up eight from negative six, where's that going to put me? At positive two, and there it is right there. It hits right at positive two. So it all works out, doesn't it? Everybody see that? So again, you should be able to, if I gave you something like this and I asked you to graph it, y uh, equals, let's just make this a little bit, let's make it smaller just so that we, yeah, there we go. So we can see it a little bit better. All right. So if I gave you something to graph like this, graph y equals x cubed minus two, all right, it should be pretty easy. You shouldn't have to do your little x and y chart thing. Man, I got one, two, three, four, five. Is there somebody behind you? Six. Seven. She's seven. Seven people. Man, I'm knocking them dead. Goodness gracious, you guys. Come on. This is stuff you've never seen before. This is stuff you've never done. All right, how could you have your head down? I don't know. I'm like all energetic, right? I'm not like talking all monotone, am I? You should wait till, wait till you go to college and you get some of these professors. They're going to say, y equals x3. And the, the, I mean, that's how they talk, some of them, all right? I think I'm fairly energetic, don't you? Yeah, you're right. All right? I don't get it. I mean, it's dark. It's before lunch. Maybe I do get it, but... Man, this is brand new stuff. You should be watching. You should be taking notes. You should be writing this stuff down. And, and some of you guys don't have anything on your desk, and you're not writing anything. Anyway, okay, enough of that. I got it out of my system. All right, so let's do this now. Let's, let's take a look at, uh, let's just cancel that and cancel that. Let's do the one we just did. Let's do uh, absolute value. I think this has absolute value. Yep. Y equals absolute value. We'll just say of x, close the absolute value. Nope, wait a minute, I forgot the equals. What am I doing? Y equals, let's try that. I was wondering why nothing happened. Y equals absolute value of x. Oh, close it. And there it is. That's our normal, everyday absolute value graph, right? We just finished doing it. It doesn't, you know, that should not be difficult to see, right? You go over one, you go up one. You go over two, you go up two. Same thing on the left-hand side. You go to the left one, you go up one, you go to the left two, you go up two. Everybody good with that? All right, so what do you think is going to happen? I'll tell you what, let's just copy this. We'll click on that and paste it. And um, what are we going to do? Let's do, put a plus here. Plus what? Nothing crazy. How about three? Is that all right? Did it do what you expect it, expected it to do? Yeah, absolutely, okay? It took that green one, that original one, that original um, absolute value, and it just shifted it up, all right? Now, this is between two and four, so where do you think it hits? At three, right? Zoom in a little bit, you actually see the three, all right? I don't have to do the minus, do I? If I put minus, what do you think it would do? It would just shift it down, okay? Everybody good with that? So, those were... That's translating it up and down. So how do, you, how do you move a graph just up and down? You just add something to it to move it up, right? And then you do what to it to move it down? Just subtract something from it. Okay. Uh, that's completely different. Let's go back to our regular program. This one. Regularly scheduled program, that's right. And I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's copy that just so I have it. Let's do this. This time, we're going to do things a little different. Let's use the squared part again. Okay, let's do the one with the squared. We'll just stick with the parabola, and then we'll go to Desmos to do the cubed and the absolute value. All right, but let's just stick with the squared this time. So I moved it up and down. How do you think we're going to move it to go left and right? Well, this is what we're going to do. Watch. Okay. Now, what do you think that's going to do to our graph? So here's our graph. Let's move it over a little bit. 
Again, what's our regular parabola look like? Starts right here. It goes 1, 1. Then it goes 2, what? 4, right? It goes 3, 8. I'm not going to do that, but this goes to there, goes to there. That's our regular, ordinary, everyday parabola. Oops, I missed it. Let's try this again. There we go. Oh, I went. I didn't go far enough over. It does. I messed it up. It should be right there. All right, so. Oh, my goodness. My hand's shaking. I'm so nervous. All right. So there's our everyday looking parabola. What in the world does this thing do to it? Well, let's put some numbers in and let's see. Put it X and Y. Let's just use these. What do you think it's going to do? What do you think that minus 2 inside of the square? Notice, this is different, isn't it? It's different than this. Everybody look. What does this do to that parabola? Right here. It moves it down 2. What do you think that's going to do to it? Is it going to also move it down 2? It's a possibility, right? What do you think it might do? Well, we went up and down. What do you think's next? Side to side, left and right. What do you think that's going to do? You think that's going to move it to the left? You think it's going to move it to the right? To the right. Because it's going to be a negative sign. All right. Let's see what it does. Okay. So Troy said move it to the right, even though that's a minus. It's going to go to the left. You would think it would go to the left, wouldn't you? All right. Since there's a minus, let's put some numbers in and see what it really does, though. Okay. So let's put a let's put a negative two in for this. So what's negative two minus two? Negative four. Now, I don't have enough numbers here, okay? It's not going to work. I, I tell you what. Yeah, let's put it. So it would be positive 16, wouldn't it? Okay? If I put a negative two in for this. So if I go, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Watch. If I put a negative two, it's going to be a positive 16. So negative two is going to be way, way up here, okay? So that would be positive 16. What to put a, let's put a negative one in for this. What? <laughs> no, stay where you are. We're almost done. We've got five minutes. So watch. This would be positive nine, correct? Let's put a zero in for this. What would that be? That would be what? Negative? Positive, because we're squaring it, right? You'll never get a negative, will you? Okay, because you're squaring it. Let's put a two in for this. Two minus two is what? Squared? A zero. Did I put a one in? Uh, I didn't put the 1. Let's put the 1. 1 minus 2 is? One. Negative 1 squared is? 1. Okay, put a 2 in. 2 minus 2 is? 0 squared is? 0. I'll tell you what, since this goes really, really big here, let's put a, a couple more numbers down in here. Let's put a 3 and a 4 down in here, okay? Let's put a 3 in for this. 3 minus 2 is 1 squared is? 1. Put a 4 in there. 2 squared is? 4. All right? So let's stick with the numbers that are within our graph. Is that all right? So let's put those in. So watch. Let's put 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's put 1, 1, 1, 1. That would go right there. Put 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. Let's put 3, 1. And let's put 4, 4 right there. So what? Oh, you get the idea. It's supposed to hit. Oh my gosh. What am I so nervous about? <laughs> All right. That's crazy looking. All right, but you get the idea. What is different about the red one compared to the white one? It moved it to the right. So, look, everybody look. What did the minus inside of the parentheses? Notice, that's different than this, isn't it? Okay, inside the parentheses, what did the minus do to that graph? It moved it to the what? To the right that many places, right? It moved it over one, two places. So if this was x minus 3 squared, then it would start here, and it would go up like this and this, okay? What if, how would I move it to the left? What do you think I would do to this to move it to the left? Make it a plus. Not make it a cube. It make it a completely different shape. It make it a completely different shape. Okay, I just want to move it to the left. So I would put x plus 2 squared. So this right here, I'll tell you what, let's do this in a different color. 
Let's just change this to, I don't know, green. Let's go green. I don't use green that much. All right, so what would that do? Just looking at it, you don't even have to do your little chart. Just looking at this, you say, okay, I've got an X squared. It's gonna look like a parabola, but what is this plus two inside the square? What does that do to my graph? It moves it to the what? To the left two places. And I know what a parabola does. I go over one, up one. I go over two and up what? Eight, remember that? One, two, I'm sorry, four. I was thinking of the cubed. Up four, uh, one, two, three, four. Right there, that would be here because these are mirror images. And so my x plus two squared is gonna look like that. Let's go to Desmos. And let me move it here so we can see it on the, and there we go. All right, so let's, uh, now we know what it, I'm running out of time. So we know what it looks like with a squared, with a parabola. Let's do the cube stuff, okay? So it's gonna be y equals, uh, put a parentheses, x to the, let's not put a, oh, I'm sorry, let's not put the square just yet. Let's put a minus. And then we'll put, we'll put three this time. Then we'll close the parentheses and then we will cube the thing, right? Where's my exponent? I think I just do this and then I can hit this and make it cubed, all right? Now, you know what a regular X cubed is? I didn't put that in there. You know what, the, you know what it does? It starts here, right? It goes up and it goes down. Look what it did. If it's X minus something, what did it do to the graph? It moved it to the right. So that goes in the opposite direction that we think it probably should. But you saw by the, the chart that we made that it actually does make it go to the right. And the Desmos does the same exact thing. Obviously, what if I put this as a plus? What's that going to do to it? It's going to move it to the left. See, it moved it to the left. All right? And it's going to do the same exact thing if you had an absolute value. So let's just do that just for fun. Um, so y equals absolute value. Now, what do we do? We put the x, but then we put it inside, right? If I'm going to move it left and right, I put it inside the absolute value. Notice I put that plus 3 and minus 3 inside the cubed, inside the function itself. So um, what do you want to move it, to the left or to the right? Okay, move it to the left. So what do we put in here then? We put a plus, oops, I messed up. So let's go x plus, and then I can close the absolute value. I, mean, I got to put a number in here. What do you want to put in there? Three? All right, and then close it, and there you go. Did it do what you thought it would do? Yeah, because if it's a plus, it's going to move it to the left. If I change this to a minus, it's going to move it where? To the right. And that is translations. We still didn't quite finish. If I had five more minutes, but um, a reflection. Here, I'll just show you what a reflection is going to do. Let me just uh, do this super quick. Bell's going to ring, but just hang on until I finish this. It won't take long at all, I promise. So watch. What if I put a negative outside of here? What do you think it's going to do to that? Put a negative right there. Look what it did to it. See what it did? It took that red one that had a positive in front right there, and putting a negative in front, what did it do? It flipped it. So what do you, how would I flip this one? Put a negative out in front of it. Watch. Boom. See what it did? Instead of this, instead of this part going up, now we flipped it and it's going down. Instead of this part going down and it goes up. Where's everybody going? So you do have a homework assignment. Is it on there? Yeah. So your homework is due. Whether you walked out the door or not, I don't care. Your homework is due. I gave you the, work, I gave you the uh, lesson plan thing. So there it is. 17 to 24. 17 to 24, page 145. <laughs> yes, I did.